Okay guys, so we're back here for part four of the General Osborne Pro build. And pretty much finished with the bike, just a few more minor touches, uh, but all right, what are we gonna be doing today? Okay, so I was just working on the rear hub and uh, this is a BSD free coaster. And um, I guess a lot of the guys that are like the pros, they like a lot of slack. So if they're rolling backwards, it doesn't catch, you know, cause if you pedal forward while you're rolling back, you start pedaling. So they like a lot of slack. And I tried that, I couldn't even ride. It was like, over the bars. So um, I've been spacing this out, trying it. And I think I finally got it where it's about like my, my S&M bike um, where it's, I don't want Eric to go flying over the bars and kill himself. So we got the hub worked out, cranks are centered, everything is spaced internally, which is really good. You will notice the chain is just tapping this bottom post on the, on the Evo brakes, but these posts are going to be cut and shortened. You can see all this gap in here. That will, this gap will be gone and these things will be shorter, closer to the frame, which I think will look cleaner. And, um, and then the chain won't hit. And the funny thing is right now you could ride it. it I mean, the only reason why it's hitting, I got it really tight. Um, so I want the chain to stretch, but, um, you could, I ride it like this. I mean, I just messing around a little bit right now. It's rideable because it's tight and we're going to shoot some stuff riding it pretty quick. You want to show them the brakes? Oh yeah. We got the front brakes on it. And, um, you guys that are the only thing I can come up with is time period. Correct. I don't know where I got that from. I'm the only one that uses that word and it sounds kind of stupid, but no, that's what I see them saying. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Then I'm not an idiot. Um, so all you guys are time period correct. I went to, I ran 883s, Diacomp 883s and flipped the mounts upside down. Okay, I'm going to show them close ups while you break that down. So it's 883s and um, I cut both pieces off of here. There was just a, you know, it's like, I forget what they call them, things that you put in there and you round out. But anyways, grinded that out. You can still use the adjuster. It's upside down. Everything's out of the way, tucked away. And if you show the back right here, I, round, I used a shell or a inset bolt uh, or a recessed bolt so that you don't kill your foot on that because thing. It's flush. So it's flush. Otherwise you got that bolt that drills into your big toe. What were the levers? Cause last time we had the red levers on. Yeah, I had these red levers on and there was no pulling power. Um, and one of them is upside down. That one you're filming is upside down right now because it, you can't find a right. Is it that one? No, it's this one the left upside down. I had to order from China oh, wow. and it's going to take like 30 days to get here. So then they'll match. <laughs> I bought a matching set, um, except they got, I think they got the um, brake stops in there, the brake locks, which yeah. I wasn't thrilled about, but I kind of had to settle cause they're just not available. Rotor is working good. And you're running the cables for the brakes through the frame of the bike, which is pretty cool. Right here. Yeah. But the thing about the rotor, this is what I like about the rotor is it is one cable here and one cable here. I, I think the Odyssey gyro is a better product. I think it works better. It's more accurate, but I sure do love the cleanliness of an ACS rotor. Simple. Yeah. And we ran, I ran the cable right into the frame. It comes out right here. It goes into an adjuster mount that I threaded into the bottom of the frame. And then we're going to have a, a little round tube right here to guide the cable, the very bottom, just like it used to have, meaning like I shouldn't have cut that one off. And, um, and it'll work great. It works really good. In fact, I'll tell you what, the 883s work pretty damn good too. I thought I was going to be sliding. Yeah. Um, so you said, uh, we got to cut this brake thing. Yeah, right here. So you can see all the marks. These are all the things that have to be done. Fill areas. Um, I'm gonna. This is a coaster brake mount, and I'm gonna shape this as close as I can to the other side because mm -hmm. it's not needed. I'm just taking everything off that is not needed. Are it's we gonna, just the way my brain thinks. Are we gonna cut those today? Maybe. Okay. So here's a cool thing. These pegs are plastic. Okay, and um, I got these from Flatland Fuel. And also, Patrick, thank you for the, Patrick is from Flatland Fuel. Thank you for the spacers for the hub. Um, 
they're plastic, man, and they, they hold up and they're really light. So that's kind of cool. And if, yeah, if I, I was gonna, these were bought for my S&M. And then the end of general build came and I didn't want to put used pegs on this bike because I wanted to be really clean, you know? Yeah. So I never put them on and now my floor out there has like a million holes for me and Dylan dropping the bike. Whoa, not from me. Yeah, from you. I don't drop the bike. Oh yeah, the, so also I know that a lot of you guys have a, um, this is a rough thing to look at. Turn your head if it's hard to look at, but the uh, foot platforms are gone. Man, I was chewing my foot up trying to ride with those things. I couldn't do anything. So I swiped them. So um, I got these tires from Flatland Fuel. They're Odyssey tires. They're um, a copy of my ACS Edge tires. But um, man, I'm sure it's, I don't know what it is, but they seem to really work good when you spin, because I got bigger tires on my S&M. When you spin on these things, there's way less drag. I mean, it's just easier to spin, like if you're doing a front wheel 540 or something. Yeah. Um, and they roll really smooth. So, I don't know. They seem to work really good. And I've, I've got 100 pounds in these right now, and they still have a little cush. So, I, I think this is going to be a good tire. And of course, the BSD cranks. I love these things. Drops. This is a real drop stem ACS 55. And uh, didn't cut the fork holes out. Left that for the time period with the TPC guys, right? Time yeah. period, correct? Um, I'm going to leave them. You know, I think once they're chromed and the rust is gone and all that, I think it's cool. You know, I, I want to have a little bit of a. Uh, so I'm listening to you guys and I'm I don't I'm not going to do it if I I wouldn't do something like that leave them in there if I disagree cuz I am going to build this the way I see it that's the only thing where I that's all I can do I, if I build it what you guys want I can't build it cuz I don't see that that vision but um I'm cool with leaving those things in I thought I went about it a million ways and I'm going to leave them and uh BSD pedals plastic really light love these things MCS, seat, MCS seat from JD Cycle Supply, Profile. You know, you hear all these great things about Profile. And then, of course, they have the smallest clamp. It's like the thinnest clamp for a seat post, right? And I had all these big ones, beefy bolts, because I felt power, man. I want that thing. Don't want it to move. So I put this little thing on there, and with like two turns, it was tight. I was like, man, there's something to be said about engineering and um profile they this is my first experience with them except for the cranks that are going on your bike so i'm um, starting to get into that little profile trip so that's it on this oh uh, these are standard bars from rick mall and turno uh, these things are great man i love the big cross bar and uh i love seeing the welds too i think that's the whole thing man All right, well, oh sorry I got to cover these guys, man, because these guys are giving us parts, and that's pretty cool. I wouldn't be able to do this if they weren't pulling us apart, but these wheels, these are BSD wheels, BSD free coaster, um, we got black spokes, chrome rims, they laced them up special for us, and uh, so um, JD Cycle Supply, BSD Etnies, SE Racing now is giving us big bikes. Uh, flatland fuel okay so we'll be back for the cutting of the brake
All right, so we just got back in from cutting the brake pad off or the brake connector off. It was that rear metal right here. So what I'm gonna do is because these dropouts are not the same. This angle, you can't cut this angle into this dropout. So I'm gonna make this side look good and then I'll shape this side to fit this dropout and that cut. So I'm sure you guys are going, oh my God, this thing's gonna be weak cutting all this extra metal off, you don't have that. Well, yeah, maybe. But once the axle is tightened up, this thing becomes one unit and it becomes really strong. And I also got a little bit of slack because Eric Wolf is not gonna be doing like 10 foot airs on this thing. Um, you don't know that? Yeah, he may, he may. He may, I think he's gonna do some freestyling, but. So I'm, I'm, I got a little bit of extra slack so I know I'm not building it for like Matt Hoffman or something, you know, where the chain stays should be like four inches thick. Um, but that's how it's going. So far it looks good. I, just, I gotta grind this weld down, shape this how I want it to shape, and then I'll match this to fit this. And this is gonna dictate how that looks just because of the way this was cut out originally. You said you got a little surprise to show them? Oh, yeah, well, this is the, uh, should, we get, should we put up a warning? Are you gonna put a warning? This is kind of gross. These are the body parts that I cut off this frame. So I know a lot of you guys are gonna disconnect right now. Um, you guys wanna see this stuff live? There's a rear peg. I don't know what side that is. Or where, rear platform. I cleaned all the guts and blood off of these things so it wouldn't look too terrible. There's the adjuster barrel that went under the frame. And I think we've been talking about this and we're thinking about having a proper funeral for uh, all this stuff. You know, we'll put it in a casket and dig a hole out in the backyard and bury it. Um, I know some of you guys have been bothered by all this chopping up. But uh, once we go through the funeral process, you guys can attend and uh, say your goodbyes there. Yeah, we got a few select invitations going out. Yeah, like three. <laughs> Me and Pat. <laughs> I'm wearing a black t-shirt, black sunglasses, and a, someone's got to wear a veil. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Carmody said he would do the sermon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, I think he did. You'll probably wear a veil for it. No, I talked to Mark Riley. He said he would talk to Mike. So we'll have an actual rear real church going guy that's cool guy mark and mike very cool guys and uh, that's about it yeah so that wraps up part four of the general osborne pro build oh and we have the um the female etney shoes <laughs> we have a, we've hired a model yeah she's uh, expensive but we're really going all, all out for you guys and she's going to wear her leopard skin etney shoes on a big bike Coming soon. Coming soon. All right, we'll see you guys back here for part five of the series. All right, see you guys.